What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. Not a charming beginning to a podcast, but appropriate to our topic today, I thought, on marital conflict. Welcome back to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. John Eldridge here, reading out of the book of James, chapter four, just to set up what I think will be a a helpful, playful, honest uh, conversation about marital conflict. And with me today, my beloved Stacy and Alan and Kelly Arnold. Welcome to the studio, Kelly. I think this is your first time with us. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. And and uh, we just, we were we were praying about, you know, what's a good topic that we feel like would be helpful. And Alan, you were the one who suggested, I, I think folks would like to hear some conversation around marital conflict. Right. Well, a lot of the people listening now have come up and said, we'd love to hear about this because it's a real struggle. It's something we know there's victory in and freedom in, but... We just don't hear many people talk about it on a deep, honest level who are living through it. So thanks to those people for recommending it. Yeah. Alan and Clay, just for some orientation, how long have you all been married? We are celebrating 20 years this November. Nice. Nice. And you have four kids? We have three. You have three. Uh, Yes. But we have a dog, too. (laughs) Four with our dog. Maybe it just seems like four (laughs) to me. Sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes it does. Yeah, we've got uh, a 16-year-old son, 14-year-old daughter, and then 11-year-old son. Okay. And an 8-year-old dog. And you guys are in the throes of the teenage years. Oh, man. No kidding. Big time. And we are celebrating our 33rd? Let's see how well you do with it. No, no, no. 34th, 34th. (laughs) No, Let's have some marital conflict. I just Here we go. Quickly did the math in my head. It's already 2017. How did that happen? I don't know. That was unfair. Somebody switched the calendar yes. on me. Stace and I were married in '83, so this wow. will be 34 this year. Mm-hmm. And as you guys think back, let, let's go back to the early years. Let's go back to early, you know, first couple years of marriage, sorting things out. What was the culture? of conflict uh, how how did how did you handle it you know where did it come in what was what was kind of the vibe in in the early days well i think we didn't the problem was we didn't really have a culture and so it felt like everything uh it, it went into chaos quickly and partially from from my growing up i never heard my parents have an argument ever Never once. So, never once. And so I, I really, as a child, the expectation was, well, there is no argument. Now, they didn't really seem to be deeply in love, but there was no conflict. Wow. And then one day we got called, this was when I was in middle school, called into the family room and my mom announced, uh, we're getting a divorce and your dad's leaving the house. And that was it. And so for me, it created this dual tension of, well, a marriage is not supposed to have conflict. There's no arguing or it's a a really bad sign. But even then, even when there's no arguing, it can just end immediately. Mm, Wow. And so that was my baggage, my background entering into marriage. What about for you, Kelly, coming in? Mm. My parents also divorced when I was nine years old. And um, coming into marriage, Alan and I both were, were and still are very strong people. We're strong opinionated people. We're both firstborns in every sense of the word. Oh, boy. And so you can see where I'm going. And so the first couple of years are a little blissful. You're married and you're in love. We had moved to a new city outside of the, the state where all of our family were. And chaos did quickly ensue. I remember knockdown drag outs. I mean, um, boy, going back to those early years, John, I think, oh, thank God 
Those were hard years. Some of them were very hard because we had no context of laying down your life for someone else Mm. at all. Mm. Mm. Coupled with just our strong personalities. So when I think back to those years, I think we spent probably a good eight years, 10 years of our marriage campaigning to change each other, yes. campaigning that we were right, and it stole the joy very quickly. Are, are you both kind of like, what is your style of relating? I think that will help That will help us sort this out. If yes. you think about move against, move away, move towards. Well, Kelly, what are you? I'm, I'm a move away. Okay. Now, back then, I was very move against. Wow. If I were moved against by someone else, yes. I was like a caged animal. Okay. Yeah. And Alan? So in our early years, especially move against. Okay. Yeah. I, I really, we went into any kind of conflict convinced that the way through was to convince the other person we were right. Yeah. So it would be so draining. I mean, it would be two, three, four hour conversations. Even when somebody gave in to the other, it was just weariness. Can you give an example of like what would be a topic that caused conflict? Yeah. Like, well, for instance, um, it could be something as everyday as vacation. Sure. So summer's coming sure. up. And Kelly really has an idea of what she'd like to do. This is pre-kids, kids. I I would have an opinion of what I wanted to do. We grew up very different in our likes and dislikes on that. And so what was should be a very fun, life-giving conversation, where do we want to spend our summer? What do we want to do? Would quickly result in me saying, well, no, 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 we did it your way last year. And so this year, this brings me life. Well, that doesn't really bring me life. Well, you know, and so it would, by the end, no matter who won, we both lost mm. because it just, yeah. yeah. Staking out your claim. Right. We we had a little bit of a different culture of conflict in our early years. Han, how would you describe it? Conflict was not allowed. Conflict meant the bottom was dropping out of my world. Um. I grew up in a family where there was conflict, where my father, uh, he's had bipolar. And um, so he would rage and you wouldn't really know what it was that was going to set him off. He was he traveled a lot. So maybe that was a good thing. I don't know. But he could sway one way or the other. And to me, it just made me sick to my stomach. So it was not directed at me, but it, it just killed me. And then and that was usually directed at another sibling. So my mom was really passive aggressive, you know, barbs. They just had well-aimed barbs that flew across the room to each other. And so conflict, I did not know how to handle at all. And I came into our marriage so completely insecure as a woman that any kind of sensing displeasure from John, it just threatened my whole well-being. And I was quick without thinking of it. I didn't, you know, consciously go, he's my father. He's going to react like this to me. But I did. I did think so. And so, of course, you remember our first conflict. I don't even remember what it was about. Neither do I. It might have been about you didn't like my dinner. I mean, it really could have been could we maybe have more vegetables? And I left the table and I went and I hid in the closet. So that was my MO. Um, move away. Yeah. Hide. Yeah. And I I came into our marriage. I'm a move against and a perfectionist in those days. Um, what's interesting is both of us came from intact families. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't there, we didn't come from divorced homes, but nonetheless. The insecurity was still there. We both came from alcoholic homes. Uh-huh. And it just felt like you don't know what's going to happen, right? And any, you know, the bottom could drop out at any time. And so yeah, in the early years, there's this funny stories of I, I'm a counselor, I'm a talker, I'm I'm a let's work it through kind of guy. Let's put it all on the table, you know. And Stacy's like, oh my gosh, like that's not what you do and that's not family culture and so i would pursue her around the house trying to 
get her to tell me what's wrong, trying to get her to tell me why she's upset or or why I'm upset or can we just talk this through? And we didn't, again, neither of us had, we did not have healthy modeling. Right. And I felt that if I said anything negative about John, he would leave. So it wasn't safe. I didn't trust his heart towards me yet. Mm. Um, so it was incredibly threatening. And I would just feel sick to my stomach if anything ever came up. And the irony is this, like, n- neither of us would have said we came from, like, super healthy backgrounds. But but the number one source of conflict for us in our early, early years of marriage was family. Right. It was e- either of the other's family, and they're doing it wrong. And I remember, like, we would not get out of the cul-de-sac that Stacy's mom lived on and you know from a family gathering before we would be into it because because as a counselor guy i would point out oh boy <laughs> what i thought oh was boy. very right. helpful observations about the family dynamics that we just walked out of you know which made me utterly defensive over my family and um did not know how to talk about that yeah. I, I couldn't even recognize it at that point in our marriage either. Yeah. And I think, um, just to continue the story on, and, and then I want to I want to come back to yours, is I think the first big turn for us came Craig and Lori um, were sort of mentors to us. And they invited us to a Larry Crabb and Dan Allender conference. And just to begin to hear, it was our first shared marital experience. Yes to begin to hear some categories laid out of like, here's where anger comes from. Here's where conflict comes from. Do you understand what is operating within you? And, you know, one of their core models at the time was manipulation. It's like how you manipulate people in order to get what you want. And just to have some tools, just to have even a shared language. I think that That was a big gift to us to just have some, okay, here's some words we can use. Here's some language that we can begin to apply to what felt like, frankly, a pretty fragile situation. Mm -hmm. Was it our third year Mm -hmm. that that divorce came up Mm -hmm. in our marriage? You know, because things were fragile and and we needed some language. We needed some some categories that we could begin to talk about things. So when you say divorce came up in your third year. The two of you just felt like this is not going to work or we're too different? Or how did that topic get spoken or come up? It actually came up for me pretty casually. Spiritual warfare also is not a category that we understood. So we didn't know what was said against our marriage or between us. Like what wasn't even real? Um, But I felt at that point, and it's actually true, we were living separate lives and so it was at the breakfast table and I just kind of like passed the jam and maybe we should get a divorce. So pretty, I was pretty desperate. It wasn't a screaming match. Mm-hmm. I didn't, that's not who I am. That's not who I am still. Mm-hmm. Um, but desperate and hopeless mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah. And then enter the conference, enter some counseling. Yes. And And we'll get into that in a minute. But just having somebody name a few things, you know, did you understand that your anger is often the result of your spouse blocking a goal of yours? And and maybe this isn't about your spouse. Maybe it's actually about your goal. (laughs) Right. You know, that you're huge. You have an agenda and you want things to go a certain way. And when they block your goal, even if your goal is no conflict, right? Um, just to have somebody begin to give us some basic, n- here's some language, here's a common understanding that you can begin to talk about these things from was really, really huge for us. So I want to flip back to your story. You guys are kind of rough and and you had some knockdown drag outs, like where did some clarity begin to come in? Well, just to kind of take you where we were before the clarity, we were in Dallas. As soon as we got married, we left Dallas, had the honeymoon in Hawaii, and ended up in Nashville the next day. 
Wow. So a whole new life. Oh, my goodness. whole new beginning. Oh, my goodness. Which in some ways was really good because uh-huh. we were going to start making couples friends and start life together in a fresh place. But I remember we were sitting in this house. We were renting a home. And it was a hardwood floor, and all the boxes were still around us. We hadn't even unpacked anything. And Kelly and I were taking a break, and we were sitting there in in the living room, family room area. And she started into a conversation with me about, Alan, you know, like in with your family and growing up in your family, like what do you think some of the things are that maybe wasn't healthy or good, or how do we want to do it differently? And I, I very much remember this this feeling at that time of, what are you talking about? Like I had a great family, like everything. I mean, everything was awesome. Yeah. They got divorced and that was sad, but man, it was, I have a, it was great. And, and it was total obliviousness to right. anything interior, anything interior. So that's where I started. Kelly had more awareness, at mm-hmm. least to ask the questions mm-hmm. at that time. We had no idea. We had no skills. We had no category for conflict. Our families had both exploded when Mm -hmm. we were little kids. Right. We had no uh, communication. Awareness Um, of the enemy. Oh, gosh, no. That came later. To say we were not equipped is a big understatement. And we, the word I would use is we just fumbled through. Conflict would come up often probably weekly, whether it was large or small, and it would quickly become large. It would become big. And both of us, there were a lot of hills we died on during that time. When you ask when it shifted, John, I think we just kind of exhausted ourselves out because of the trauma that we both went through as kids. We had a resolve I don't, I don't remember ever considering divorce, which is God's grace through the trauma, I guess. So I never doubted that we would still be married here 20 years later, but I think I doubted if we would have any joy. Mm. You know, I think during those years, yeah. the doubt was, we'll probably just be one of those couples that are married on paper and we live together, but our hearts are so far from each other. Mm. And I think we both came from that background. And so we had the resolve to stay. But boy, that resolve went to wanting to be right. We're not leaving. We're here. But boy, we have no idea what to do. We were married in 97. And so around the year 2000, 2001, that's when we came across John, your books for the first time. And uh, I worked at Thomas Nelson, and so Sacred Romance had been out, uh, and I had it on my shelf because we had a copy of every book that was published, and I thought it was a marriage book. And so I remember picking up Sacred Romance like, boy, we need some help in our marriage. And if it can become more sacred, (laughs) I want that romance. And so I, I didn't even know what the book was about. And so as I started reading it, that's when I started realizing, oh, the arrows and the the larger story and where am I wounded that I'm carrying my wounding into the marriage and and with God, where am I? And so that truly was the beginning of the shift for us. And we had a language all of a sudden, and we could look back at our own lives Mm. without blame and without shame, but to go, this is the environment we were raised in. This is how we thought conflict was resolved. Just may the stronger person win Mm. or, or bail out. But Either way, we weren't. We didn't even understand the heart. That feels like the starting point. I, I just want to name some things as we go through the, the podcast together, and, and this will be over several weeks, but kind of the starting point is you have been shaped by your past. You have been shaped by it, and you have an internal world. And I, I think for you and I, going going to our first quote, you know, counseling conference, yes. marriage conference, like it was an epiphany mm-hmm. to go, wow, I have an internal world and I have been profoundly shaped by my past and I am bringing those things into this 
into this marriage. It, it isn't a fresh start. Because I know it felt like that to us. You know, you're young and you're in love. We got married very young. I was 23. Stace was 24. And how old were you guys when you... We got married older. Um, we got married... I was 30 when we got married. I think you were 31. <laughs> I was 21. But, okay. but we, you and we fight dated. About it. <laughs> we dated five I'm years sure we did. before, which was a long dating period. And looking back, I know for me it was because I knew how to date really well. Yeah. Because you don't have to go for the heart in dating, you right. can just have fun. But I was scared to death of marriage because the only marriages we knew imploded. So we married later and had yeah. to start those issues then. Yeah. I wanted to go back to where you said we went to this conference and we began to have categories to think in and to look at, wait, I'm coming in here with a story. There's more that's affecting how I experience you or my marriage, my perception. And I, my reaction to that was relief. Hmm. It was really mm-hmm. so much relief that... Um, that there were reasons, that there was a path, that there was hope to not, like, this isn't a sentence on my life. Yeah. There is, God has growth for me. Yes. Yeah. To, to admit brokenness. Yes. In, in both ways to, you know, I am a broken person, but I'm also relating brokenly. Like, to own both sides, yes. you know, it's, and that was one of the things that I appreciated about the early Crab Allender model was, this isn't just about your wounds, it's also about your sin, folks. And, and then some of you need to hear, this isn't just about your sin, this is actually also about your woundedness, you know, and to bring those two things together, to give us some categories, to give us some language, wow, I have an internal world, and it's affecting the way we relate. This isn't just about, you know, because for us, it would be the, the early things would be money and family. And like you, where are we spending our, our, you know, our vacation time or weekends and, you know, it'd be the basic stuff. Yeah. And I think that the wounded part in me was that you saw me shrink because out of my fear mm-hmm. to, to lose you or be threatened by anything that you saw, the woman that you loved and courted and married shrink back into this, where did you go? Mm-hmm. So that was that was a deal too. Yeah, it was. I think I'm going to pause the conversation here and just say, folks, I, I hope you're tracking with us. I think we're opening up some categories for you. I think single, married, separated, divorced, I think you're you're tracking with us on, on some of these things. And so we're going to pause here. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart podcast with Alan and Kelly Arnold, John and Stacy Eldridge, and we're just going to pick this right up next time. Hope you'll be with us. <laughs> <laughs>